here's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star being played in two different keys. As you can see, the tune is being played with different sets of frequencies, but they both make up the same tune. When you play a note, you're triggering a sound wave, and each sound wave has its own frequency. When making a tune, the set of sound waves you use isn't really important. Rather, it's the distance between the notes that make up the tune. Now, imagine that a pianist and a flutist wanted to play the song together, but the flutist is gonna play the song in the first key, and the pianist is gonna play the song in the second key. It would sound a little something like this. All this to say, when musicians want to make music together, they need to agree to tune their instruments to the same set of frequencies. Say for instance that you just started learning music theory. You've joined the course, you've got yourself a copy of Music Theory for Dummies, and you're ready to dive right into it. When learning music theory, one of the first things that you're likely to hear is how sound is broken up into 12 pitches. You might hear the teacher or professor say something along the lines of, in Western music, we have the 12 pitches, and then he'll go on to list off the 12 notes that we use. For example, today, the note called A, which is played above middle C, is tuned to 440 hertz, and all the other 11 notes are tuned accordingly. You may want to remember that. You might ask, who decided which frequencies, and when, and how? Did someone just make them up? Well, the answer is actually pretty crazy. Our story starts in the 1800s. Before music was available in any digital medium, musicians would tune their instruments essentially however they wanted or use a tuning fork to set the pitch of a specific note. Different countries and even different cities all had their own idea of which frequencies made up which notes. And for a while it worked. Musicians would play the tuning from the place that they came from, and when they moved to another city, they would just tune their instrument and join in on the local tuning. Music spread more and more, and it became commonly accepted that the concert A, which is the A above middle C, was played somewhere in the lower to middle 400 hertz range. By the way, the reason why the note A above middle C is called a concert A is because in orchestras, one musician would play that note so that everybody else can use it as reference to tune their own instrument. Naturally, that's because when an orchestra wanted to play together, it was important that all of their instruments were tuned to the same tuning. Because remember that twinkle twinkle little star? An English mathematician by the name of Alexander John Ellis even studied Mozart's piano and revealed that Mozart's note of A was tuned to 421 hertz. So this was actually supposed to sound a little bit more like this. Let's focus on France. The first ever standardized pitch was first agreed upon in Paris, France in 1788 called Paris tuning, how original. It wasn't universally accepted, and there's little documentation of the details of this standardization. The tuning they set would have made Concert A set to around 409 hertz, which is 31 lower than today. As the 1800s began, most musicians agreed that A was somewhere in the range of 415 hertz, but nothing was set to standardize it. But that little variation was enough to cause discrepancies. Music was getting hard to play. Stages became bigger, which meant that the higher frequency notes were getting less airtime due to the acoustics of large halls. Materials were getting stronger, meaning that instruments could be tuned to play higher frequencies, and vocalists became frustrated because the lack of standardized tuning meant that they could not sing in the key that best suited their voice. And so, musical chaos ensued. That's when Napoleon III decided to take matters into his own hands. He decreed a new standardized tuning in 1859 by the name of Diapason Normal, based on the tuning done by a man named Jules Levy. That tuning tuned our concert A to 435 hertz. By the late 1800s, most European countries had adopted the French Diapason Normal. In 1885 in Vienna, under the influence of the Gesellschaft der Musikfreund in Wien, or the Wiener Music Verein, which was a German music academy, the European countries held a conference. A pitchfork is a bit of metal that produces a note when clanged. And this is how musicians at the time got in tune. Before the conference, the Wiener Music Verein sent out 100 untuned pitchforks to as many cities, countries, and towns as they possibly could with one simple request. Tune the fork to your local tuning. These forks were then sent back and used as reference in the conference. 
In the outcome of the conference, it was agreed to formally accept the standardized tuning of Concert A as 435 Hz, just like Napoleon III's Diapason Normal. These original forks are actually on display in the archives at the Wiener Musikverein in Vienna. Now, let's skibbity dippity to the end of World War I. In the year 1919, 28 nations came together and signed a treaty, and in it, it was included that the Concert A must be accepted at 435 Hz, as discussed in the Vienna Conference. This treaty was the Treaty of Versailles. No. I am not kidding. It is actually in the Treaty of Versailles. But here's the thing with the UK. They didn't particularly care for this new tuning, and so with time, they started to fade out and do their own thing. The Philharmonic Society in England used an oboe to sound the concert A before performing so that all the other instruments could get in tune. And the temperature would affect the sound of an oboe, because an oboe is a wind instrument. The temperature essentially caused the oboe to play a concert A as what we have currently today, which is 440 hertz. And so, with time, the standardization of Concert A began to change once again. Much like 200 years earlier, this was barely a problem, because musicians would just tune up to the local tuning. That is, until broadcast took over the world in the 1920s. And just to dig a with the advent of radio, the problem of the different tunings was making itself very obvious to the public, as playing songs in different keys was rather conspicuous. Hey, remember that twinkle twinkle little star? And so the tuning chaos went on. In the year 1939, representatives from various national standardizing associations gathered together to discuss the implementation of a standardized pitch tuning for our Concert A. This meeting was highly anticipated for both musicians and also listeners of music because it would indicate how music was going to sound. Without a standardized pitch, it was difficult for musicians to play together and for audiences to appreciate the music. After much deliberation and discussion, the representatives finally came out that a concert A should be tuned to 440 Hz, just like today. This decision was loosely based on experiments conducted by a Prussian silk manufacturer named Johann Heinrich Schiebler a hundred years earlier with the invention of the tonometer which is essentially a big box of forks tuned to different frequencies. The decision was met with kind of mixed reactions from the music community. Some welcomed the change, believing that it would bring harmony and consistency to music performances worldwide. Others were very resistant to the idea, arguing that it would alter the sound of music from its original composition. Just before anyone could pick up their instrument, World War II broke out, just three months after the conference. Naturally, government as well as non-government agencies shifted their focus. And so, once again, tuning chaos was back. In 1952, the World War had formally come to an end, and by then, musicians were back to tuning their instruments however they wanted. And so in 1955, the federation now known as the ISO reaffirmed that Concert A is to be tuned to 440 Hz. But you know how musicians can be. And so once again, rogue tuning was popping up all over Europe. In 1975, yes, less than 50 years ago, the federation released their final reaffirmation that today's tuning is Concert A at 440 Hz. Despite the opposition, the ISO pushed through with implementation. It was a momentum decision that would shape the future of music forever. Today, the 440 hertz tuning is widely accepted. As you settle into music theory class and your professor says, Western music is broken down into 12 pitches with concert A tuned at 440 hertz, now you know why. Take it, they always want you to take it, just close your eyes baby fake it, burning inside.